Hello everybody. It's about time I got around to doing this particular video. I hope the mic levels are okay. I'm still um, still having some slight trouble getting those perfect. Obviously need some new equipment. I've spent quite a lot already on microphone and uh, some other bits and bobs around the microphone, like an you know arm and all that sort of stuff, but. It's very tricky to get a decent sound quality, so I think I need to either buy a much more expensive mic, which I hope not, or um, a preamp maybe with my mic. Because obviously I don't want to have to be shouting into my microphone to uh, to make videos. I want to be able to talk into it at normal volume and, f and to have game music on in the background and for everything to just work. But if anyone can help me with that, let me know be very interested anyway this video is just for those who want to begin from scratch to create games in assembly language I mean this sort of um, development environment can be used in basically all types of game development but um, modern <coughs> languages and game development you'd be using tools such as unity or unreal perhaps and you would have no need for um for doing this but we're here today to show you how to develop for the zx spectrum uh, the same would apply for the nintendo nes the commodore 64 it would be a different um assembly language essentially um, many similarities but you'd be talking to a different processor but the exact same scenario would set up um, would apply but um, for this one we're doing ZX Spectrum and the only difference is the compiler would be different but um, we're going to start out I already do have it installed on my system I've started I've created a new profile but of course um, some of my programs are left behind but um, you'll have to ignore that it should be fine as I, I expect most of you already know how to do this but this is for those of you that don't so um, this is how I do it there's millions of ways you can use notepad but I use VS code and we can just google it there and as you can see free download I'm using Windows by the way all of these all of this software I'm going to show you is compatible with Linux I have used it in, um, in Debian Linux and MX Linux I've never used a Mac in my life if you're a Mac user good luck to you I'm sure it's, it's straightforward it's supposed to be with Macs so um, Sure, it's going to be all right for you. I'm not a Mac user myself. I don't get along with them that well. Too expensive, in my opinion. Um. Anyway, <laughs> let's not start. A, let's not start a war over which computer is best. They're all equally good. Um. So anyway, imagine you downloaded that. I've already downloaded it. I'm not going to download it again. And you're left with oh well I've been left with an unconfirmed download here <laughs> I don't know what that is I'm guessing that came from where I just abandoned that anyway you did download this Nothing straightforward now, is it? I think it realises I've already got it on my system, maybe. Here we go. Uh, uh, I'm choosing the 64-bit build. There's several builds, as you can see. I 
Oh, I'm not used to using edge. It's down the bottom here. So I, I can't even count. I can't say there yet. Right. So you'll be left with that. And obviously, if you don't know how to double click and install a program, then you might be in the wrong place here. So just double click that and install it. And if, as I say, if you, if you can't manage that, you're going to have to go and stop this video and uh, look look up um, just general how to use Windows. You know, <laughs> I don't think, no offense, but you're not ready for um for coding if that's the case. Prove me wrong. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Alright, so with, with VS Code installed, you're going to see this. A blank welcome page. And this is all you need. You could you don't need anything else. I mean, you don't even need this. You could use Notepad. This is this will enable you to write the code. You won't be able to compile it. Firstly, we'll get a compiler. So we could search again ZX Spectrum compilers. But as you can see, it gets complicated. There's a lot of different choice. We could even try um, what is best compiler for Windows ZX Spectrum game development. Here we're starting to get into some of the nitty gritty. Again, though, it's going on about native C programming. You know, that's a modern concept compared to um, what we're doing here, which is going to be assembly language. And we're using that right from the start of the ZX Spectrum's lifespan. So anyway, after some research, I did find out that we're going to want the PASMO compiler. There's other ones available. But I like this one. I've never had any problems with it. It appears to be made by a Spanish developer um, group or whatever because it seems to um, dominate in Spanish. But there is English here. And I found this area. And then we're, I would go for the Windows executable. Gzip will be for Windows. Um, Linux, sorry. So yeah, I've worked, well actually, have I got this installed on this new profile? Let's get this. Okay, so this can be deleted if you, once you've installed it. We've got Pasmo zip here. I'm using 7-zip. If you haven't got it, you should be able to just click open. And it should open in the when if you've got Windows 10, that is, it should be able to just open that archive. I like Win, I like Seven Zip. Okay, so one of the things I like about Pasmo is it's just all self-contained in this .exe file. Uh, I I would recommend, by the way, this is a side topic. I always change view to show it uh, not in files. File extensions. Don't know. It's up to you. But this is a brand new profile and I hadn't changed that. I don't like it when it doesn't show the file extension. So this can be copied anywhere you like. Um, the thing is, my my hard drive's full, and I've already got it installed. 
But what we'll do is, we'll, I'll use my documents folder. You can put this anywhere you like, but I'm going to put it in my documents, and I'm going to put ZX Dev as my folder name. That's where I'm going to keep everything, all my source files, all my games when they're compiled, all my artwork, everything's going to go in here. So the first thing I probably want to do actually is just make a folder called source. I put that underscore there just so that it stays at the top. Again, not needed. And then I'm going to paste Pasmo. I'm going to paste a copy right there. Well, do you know what? I'll make it. I'll give it its own folder. And I'm going to copy it in there. It's a tiny file. File. <coughs> well, I, I say I copy it in there. I keep changing my mind. I'll delete that. So now we've got the copy in there. <coughs> but what you can do now. is just write in environment variable. So I've written environment there. That's going to bring this window up here, and as you can see, you can get your environment variables, path, and then go to the path where you put Pasmo. Double click a new line, paste it, paste that path in there, full profile path, and click OK. And what that enables you to do uh, I can't readily show you it but um, you might have seen PowerShell or, or command prompt but PowerShell particularly I can now just write PASMO and as you can see it knows what PASMO is and it's telling me um, a quick guide of how to use it whereas if I'd have done that without the environment variable let's remove it I should have showed you before it'd be interesting to see yeah it does work so I think it'll wait until the next time I start PowerShell Yeah, that will happen. If you get that error, it probably means you haven't added PASMO to the path. And if you don't want to add PASMO to the path, you can just go to CMD, Command Prompt. And then as long as you've copied the PASMO into the folder you're in, it will still work. But, um, I'm going to now add that back, so environment variable brings up that I pasted it in there and Bob's your uncle All right, so we have PASMO installed and it's ready to go and it doesn't matter where it's located now compared to our projects. So that could have been in program files or, you know, it could have been on the Z drive. You know, it could be on a completely different hard drive. It wouldn't matter. You can close that window. So the next thing I wanted to show you was extensions. We'll have to... I suppose highlight how useful extensions are by creating a file first without the extension. So we go to a new file, and we're going to make a hello world. What I tend to do is just write hello or any title, and then I can just press the hotkey for save. 
which is control S. As you see, I just navigated to my folder where I wanted to store this new uh, this new um, ZX program, and make sure you don't call it a text file. It's hello.asm. Don't worry about this. If you as long as you write asm dot asm, and as you can see, that marketplace has extensions that can help. I'm not going to search it because <clears throat> let's pretend you didn't see that pop up. You might want to know how to do that without doing this. So normally you'd have, I can delete that. You'd have some highlights in here if you've done some code. As you can see, I haven't. No, nothing at all being highlighted. Like you literally might as well be in Notepad right now. But here's the beauty of it. Just write in Z80. That's our processor. We've got millions to choose from. Look, Pasmo here. So I think I'll go for Pasmo this time. I think last time I went for um, that one there. That's that's a good one as well. But I'm going to go for Pasmo. And it's going to highlight all the code exactly how I like it. It's enabled, the extension is enabled globally. And there we go, we've got some colour in. Although I must admit, I actually am not keen on that colour in. I can't make out the um, load. Not a massive fan of that colouring, but it'll do. It'll do. You could explore them. I mean, there's nothing stopping you installing this one as well. I wonder if I can uninstall this. There we go. Hasn't seemed to make much difference. I'm going to save that and see if it changes the colour in when I come back in. Yeah, as I like, I prefer that colour in. The load command is now highlighted and the call is highlighted the same colour. They're all highlighted. Everything there has got its own colour code. There's nothing white there except for the, um, the prefix I put for <coughs> hexadecimal notation um, we now have a uh, we have our environment set up I want to find out how long this stream's been going 20 minutes I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it there because I'm gonna come back and do hello world but I don't want to have to um, edit the videos as you know, just it saves me the hassle. I'll just log out now and um, come back on when I'm ready to show you the next stage, which is uh, printing Hello World to the screen on the ZX Spectrum. As you might be aware, if you've watched my other videos, I've already done this, but um, I've had a couple of requests to do it with the microphone louder. So I hope this one is going to be louder. I'm sure you already had this set up anyway, those who were requesting that, but. Um, this is the first one of the series, of, of an ongoing series, um, working on ZX Spectrum and all retro consoles, but we're starting out with the ZX Spectrum. So really good to um, to have you with me. Any feedback is always welcome in the comments, so always looking out for those comments. Don't forget to also give me a follow on Twitch and a subscribe on YouTube and a thumbs up on the video. All of it helps. 
We'll see you again soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.